Hello. So today we continue with our series of practical security controls. The series is concerned about applicable and reliable information security controls that one can imagine to use to secure his or her cyber environment. So today we are going to cover the first control according to CIS critical security controls. And if you have not seen the introductory video, please, please, please go view that video face so that you can go ahead with us as we proceed in this series. So the first control is inventory and control of enterprise assets. So we may have known what inventory is, but today we are going to know what inventory is as far as cybersecurity assets are concerned or digital assets are concerned. So actually this control is all about having continuous management of all enterprise hardware. Management by the sense that we always have the capability to track and to know what kind of hardwares are connected in our cyber environment or in our information infrastructure. And this does not matter where have they been connected from, being it physical, virtual, remote, and even those hardware that are within the cloud. All of them, as long as they fall under our jurisdiction, it is our responsibility for us to track them and to know them wherever they are. And the purpose of having this tracking is so that we may have a totality of assets that we need to protect. And this helps us to know what are authorized assets and what are unauthorized assets. So in essence, the very objective of this control is for us to know the scope of where we need to defend. You know, even in normal circumstances, if you have a security person in a company or in a house, one of the things that security person needs to know are what asset is he or she is responsible for protection. So as us as cybersecurity guards, before we start to do anything, we know we need to know beforehand what hardware are in our coverage. So how do we know what hardware are in our coverage? This is the control that help us to know those kind of hardwares. And we know the today's contemporary environment is very dynamic. Let's say you are in an organization. There are some users, they come with laptops. Some users use mobile devices. Some users, they use devices that they just plug and remove after some time. So you can see the actual assets load map, the actual assets coverage that you have in your given IT infrastructure is that way dynamic because some assets or some hardware are temporarily connected and are removed. So without having this control of continuous retracking, the kind of hardware that are connected to your given IT infrastructure, you as a security person, you are not going to be able to know what assets are real yours and what assets are not yours so that you can know what to protect and what is away from your protection jurisdiction. So in this control, also we are going to know how are we going to achieve this? Because as we said from the beginning, the essence of this series is not just to talk about stories, but to transform those cyber concepts, those cyber protection mechanism to a way that any individual or any organization of any maturity in cyber security can implement them. So they are common approach for one to know the hardware or assets that are in his or her IT infrastructure. And one of the common approaches, one may use discovery network scanning that they come with vulnerability scanners. We are going to see writers about vulnerability scanners. So I'm not going to talk more about it, but this is one of the ways those people who have used vulnerability scanners, the most of the commercial, of course, most of commercial vulnerability scanner, they have this capability, even the non-commercial ones, they have this capability just to know what hardware are within your IT infrastructure. But another source that one can use, one of the common source, the logs from the authentication server. For those organizational or people that use Active Director, it is possible for you to know through Active Director what are particular hardware that have been connected to a given organization. So that is one of the ways that one can use to have this kind of inventory because inventory is just a list, but here we are specifically concerned about the list of hardware connected to our IT infrastructure. 
Then another way that can be used to detect or to know this list of hardware is through the use of network logs from switch because we know every device is connected to your network in one way or another will send packets to the switch being it level two or whatever levels of switch packets there will be there and logs there will be there so if you have that kind of switch then you can have the logs to know what devices that have been connected to your network so these are one of the common some of the common methods that one can use to realize this kind of security control as the first control in our list of CIS critical cyber security controls. Now, you already have this kind of list. Where and what are the common ways that people use to store now this kind of inventor? Because you have the inventor, you need to store. Because you have to remember, the idea here is not just to have this kind of inventor. The idea here is to have this inventor but to be in a form that you can use it as a reference because we know the essence of having this inventory of your hardware is so that you may always know which hardware are under your jurisdiction and if you know that also you can know the other side of the coin if there is any other hardware connected to your network but it is not authorized or it is not the one that was supposed to be in your given it infrastructure so the common ways of storing this inventory is through spreadsheets and through database those are the straightforward methods of doing it so we have seen those parameters about this control now let us talk about the safeguards when you are doing this what are the critical things that you have to not forget or what are important things that you have to make sure you have considered them when you are undertaking this control or when you are implementing this control of course we know the first and the foremost thing is you have to establish the inventory and remember this is a hardware inventory the purpose of the inventor is for you to have a point of reference of authorized or of known hardware assets in your IT infrastructure. So at least some of the information that you have to put there, there has to be information that you can uniquely identify these hardware. So if your hardware has a static IP, you can include the static IP. But if you have dynamic IP, you don't need to include the IP because it will change. It will, won't be static. Next time you're going to see it, it's going to be a different IP address. But there has to be a kind of address that you need to identify your hardware. So you can put the MAC address of your hardware or the serial number of your hardware and the machine name, of course. If it's PC, the PC will have the name of the user. So at least a MAC address and machine name. And if the device has a static IP, then you can include it because we know these tools now, they help us to know what kind of that particular hardware even if the other parameters are changing now if you already have this kind of invention you the purpose as we say not just to have the risk but to be able to use it in cyber security in dollars and this form a scope of kind of hardware that you are supposed to protect so one of other safeguard that you need to always having in mind through this list now you should be able to address and authorize assets because now you have the rest of all hardware and you have verified and see now this hardware are the one that are I know and they are the one that are legitimate to be used in my network. So whenever you scan your network again or whenever you are doing your security activity and you detect their, their hardware whose MAC address or whose unique ID is not included in your former inventory, that's where you see now this hardware is a kind of hardware that I need to be concerned with. So you need to have ways to address this unauthorized hardware, maybe by removing them or there are proper policies that are there for you to know how to do with this kind of hardware. Yeah. And you can use any effective tool that you can have because we see the common tools. So there is no rule of thumb, as we've been saying from the beginning. The idea here is to make use of what you can do in an effective manner and efficient manner. But as far as our this series is concerned, as we said from the beginning, we're not just going to talk, but we are going also to show how to realize this kind of controls. In this series, we are going to use elastic stack or elastic ELK, standing for elastic log search and kibana to implement this control. So we are going to see how can we use one of the most reliable and powerful open source solution to realize the inventory of our hardware assets in our given IT infrastructure. And why have we decided to use ELK? Why have we started to use Elastic? 
instead of other things. One of the reasons, or some of the reasons that this is a free and it's open source, but not just because it's free and it's open source. I've been using these tools and some colleagues of mine have been using this tool. And as I said, we are using tools that we have personally bet or tested and see that they really provide the value that we expect for them to have when we are doing this security controls or when we are securing our cyber environment. So this Elastic Stack is one of the open source tools that have some very powerful features that we can use. One, one of them is to realize this control. But also, we are going to see as we proceed on this series, this Elastic Stack by itself is going to help us to implement at least seven of the 18 control that we are going to cover according to CIS, CIS critical cyber security control. And we are going to see this practical side of it when we have reached the third control. And there is a reason for that because there has to be a kind of relationship between this control and the forthcoming control. So we are not going to start it immediately, but when we have reached the third control is when we are going now to see the practical side of using Elastic to implement all the control that can be implemented by it from there onwards. So, so far we have covered this first control, inventory and control of enterprise assets, and we are remained with all these secret controls. And please, if you have not seen, you, are not, you have not viewed the first video, please go through it so that you have a blood picture of what you are really going to cover in this series. And please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your neighbor. Don't forget to tell your colleague, be it a security professional, a student, an academician, whoever that has endeavors in security issues. This series is going to be very beneficial to his or her. So please subscribe. And please, you can contact us at any point of time. If you have any question about cyber security and we are much interested about questions that are concerning the practicals and not the theoretical stuff. If you have issues that you need us to help about your cyber security in the overs concerning these controls and if we have just covered the first one but we keep on covering the rest of them or concerning anything about cyber security this is our sub number as you can see below the screen there you can just chat with us and we are going to respond because we say the purpose of this series is so that people can make use of this information to secure their cyber environment. So that's it for today. Thank you, and you are warmly, warmly welcome again to see the progress of this series. Thank you very much.